No, I was talking about more whenever he was just like, oh, yeah, it's all Zach's fault that we have this background noise. And then it was all in Hans's track. And I said, did you do noise suppression? And he said, yeah, I went through and I like deleted the parts with noise. And I said, no, but did you apply noise suppression? That was the, the very track? first and goes, edit. The very first time and he goes, I did noise one suppression. of these. I didn't know there was any of that. I didn't know it's that. because he spent Are 10 minutes me saying it was my fault. Well, okay, because in fairness, most of it was your fault. I had to, de- I had to delete a lot of stuff from your tracks. <laughs> See that? Before See you that? move the mic in front of your face, like a Still normal, that? the normal place to have a microphone. See, he refuses to admit fault. <laughs> Welcome okay, to how, how the sausage gets made. Okay. So the title of this movie is Belly of the Beast. Yeah. Uh-huh. There are, I think, a million obvious jokes to be made based on the star of this movie and the title of this movie. I definitely saw some of those jokes in people's letterboxed reviews. So I think for the episode of The Belly of the Beast, we should, because, you know, we're not hacks. We're not taking the easy route. We're trying to create something. You know, <laughs> we're some, not hacks. We're, we're trying not. to create something that resembles f***ing art here. We're I think we should amateurs. remember ourselves. No comments on Steven Frederick Seagal's physical appearance on his physique in the belly of the no, beast. There's no, many no, no, jokes no, no, that could be made no, no, about no, no, the belly no, 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 of the beast. No, no, no. Absolutely not. You cannot hold me. No. <laughs> no, listen, Hans, but because the Hans is the only hack here, here, guys. It's fine. But you can't check your six. It's kind of like, you know, taking a screwdriver to a gunfight. What's happening? Just like old Tom, Tom. <laughs> there's a lot to edit out. <laughs> Welcome back to Steven C. at all. It's my no uh, he won't edit it out. <laughs> I can feel his anger. We good? We ready? <laughs> let's roll with it, actually. Yeah, let's go. Welcome back to Steven C. at all. It is my great pleasure to announce the, our first guest appearance by our good friend Isabel. Yay. I'm Hans. I'm Aaron. I'm Zach. Oh, and I guess I should intro myself here, huh? Hi. <laughs> I should intro myself and say hi, but not my name, but like everybody else did. <laughs> he just said my name. Oh my. And today we're talking about Belly of the Beast oh, uh, from 2003. And I don't think this is supposed to be a comedy. It, in fact, it definitely wasn't supposed to be a comedy. But I laughed my ass off this entire movie. <laughs> I was actually thinking, watching this movie, like, Seagal should do action comedies. Like He would be really good at it. <laughs> he tries no, to I do, don't think he can. He tries to do straight action movies. He, it, I'm sorry, Steve, but it's just not for you. Like, you can make action comedies. Some of the best movies... The least bad movies that we've seen in this series were comedies, like action comedies. Just do those. Except there is, this is like something we've talked about before, how I love some like bad movies, but when a movie's trying to be bad, like, you know, it like takes the yeah. fun out. I do worry that if he was intentionally trying to be funny, it would like stop, it would cease. Oh, it would be 50 point. Sharknadoes. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, this one's not trying to be funny, but it ends up being really funny because it's just so bad. <laughs> So. I want to I want to stress though it it was not this wasn't a bad watching experience like Ticker was Mm-mm. that was Mm-mm. that was like frustrating and irritating and I couldn't wait for it to be over because I was wasting my life this one was hysterical <laughs> I'm not I'm not quite there with you I have to say really you so, and I I don't think we've ever well we're, okay. we're never like in complete disagreement but we never share the same view we flip every single one of these no well because the reason i say that is just i watched that like almost like perfectly split down the middle i watched the first 45 minutes and then it was like uh the scene where he gets arrested like right there like i watched like the second 45 minutes a day later and yeah. i like literally had plex open with the movie and i like it took so much willpower to actually click play on it like <laughs> <laughs> I fake started it like four times. I'm like, okay, it's time to start. Okay, time to start. And I like, I'm genuinely like, it was so much of a mental hurdle when I was thinking I, think I could be doing literally anything else. I did not want to like watch the second 45 theme. minutes of this movie. That honestly seems like a common theme because you, you've you watched a lot of these like split in half over your lunch break and stuff yeah. like that. I, I think that that might be part of the problem because anytime you've watched it the whole way through, you've been much more positive than when you've had to stop and pick it back up. You run out of steam. I mean, I, I certainly don't think it helps, but like if I was halfway through Under Siege 2, I'd be fine like picking up Under Siege 2 again. It certainly doesn't help the matter, but I don't think it's the sole reason. Hmm. 
Because this one, truthfully, um, if I just had like the last 20 minutes in a vacuum, I'd be right there with you. Because like I was taking notes this time. And when you look at my notes, I think, yeah, like the first like third of my notes are for like the first like hour and 15 minutes of the movie. And then like just the last 20 or 15 minutes of the movie are like all the rest of my notes. Yep. For the last like 20 minutes. For that whole, like, ending, like, action scene, I'm right there with you. Like, I'm laughing the whole time. I'm just like, this is so absurd. This is, like, wild. Like, I'm just, I don't know. I was not feeling it for most of the movie. That's funny. That's fair. The last 20 minutes of the movie are when I just checked out completely. So, <laughs> well, those are the best so... 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, so we found someone I can disagree with harder than Hans, I guess. Okay. On <laughs> so, <laughs> so... Uh, we haven't even gone over a synopsis yet, Hans. No. You're up in a minute, but I did. This was we talked about this last episode, where like, okay, so the, this is the second film produced by uh, Steven Seagal's production company, like his. Well, or at least his production company when it's operating under this specific name. Yeah, it seems like he it, like Steamroller Productions is his, and they've done like 50 of these movies. Yeah, um, and so we talked about this last episode. But in these movies, you just have to like enter enter the flow state, a, a flow state. <laughs> it's like a it's a bullet hell shooter, like kind of just let the movie roll over you. Like like I will say, it was my flow state. Like stuff's just yeah. happening. I'm just like, yeah, okay. Like yeah. I'm I'm there. But yeah, no, I I do. I, I will to give Hans credit. Is definitely that. I I will give Hans credit. I think like I did interrupt my flow. If I just gone the whole way through, I would just be standing the whole time. Like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. But like restarting that, like you can't pick back up from yeah, okay, sure, whatever. So yeah. in order to uh, help our listeners at home, Hans, would you like to give us a synopsis? Yeah, uh, I'll <laughs> no. do my best. <laughs> so in this one, we follow Jake Hopper. In the very beginning, he saves his buddy... Swinty, played by Byron Mann, who is the highlight of this oh, movie. Oh, should have been the main movie. character. Oh, easily. Should have been Absolutely the main should have been. Actually, pretty cool, charming action hero. Yeah. Honest to God, I can't remember why the like opening of the movie happened or what happened. He saved uh, oh, don't Byron's explain life. It's about 90% of the way through the movie. So, Say what? Oh, the, oh, you mean like the pre-credits yeah, sequence the, like, thing? Yeah. Thailand, 1994. Explained. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with anything. He saves uh, Sunti's Byron's life, and, and that's it. Also, Sunti. I guess just so that can play back in later. That's it. And I will. So Isabel mentioned Sunti accidentally shoots a woman. Um, and the entire time, I'm not even thinking of the actual thing from Die Hard. I'm just thinking of Aaron when he was talking about Die Hard. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> "I'm just picturing Sunti like I shot a woman." <laughs> <laughs> so. We skip forward present day. Uh, Seagal, Jake Hopper is in Hawaii. He cu- gets a call from his daughter, who's in is it Thailand? Mm-hmm. Uh, with her, I guess, boyfriend and her other friend and her other friend's boyfriend, and they get kidnapped. <laughs> and that's pre- you mean they get taken? <laughs> they get taken. So I, I was, actually wrote down yeah. in my notes. This movie came out in 2003. <laughs> I wrote down in my notes. Did Taken rip off this movie? Because <laughs> <laughs> the first 20 minutes are it's Taken. Like it, yeah, it pretty much is. So that's like they get kidnapped, and that's the whole thing. Uh, they're held prisoner, and Seagal has to make it the entire way across the world to save them. Whatever. So he flies there, and he's very, well, he just flies no there. Just he just flies there, and a bunch of nonsense and happens. CIA and he talks to him a, for some reason. Yeah, it talks to a bunch of different people. The CIA, they know of him because he's of course ex CIA in this one too. They say basically just let him do his thing, and if he gets in too much trouble, then kick him out. But they don't because of course they don't. Why would they? He's, just he's too Steven Seagal. Good. I do actually he's appreciate just too good. I do actually appreciate. It. it seems like the like what would ordinarily be the antagonistic like you know military you know police agency force in this movie basically has entered the flow state with us. They're just like yeah sure <laughs> whatever <laughs> just let him do it. I don't know. Just let just let it. Like, why not? Like yeah, just, so yeah he, whatever have fun with it. He meets up with his buddy, Byron Man, and uh, Byron Man's a monk now because he's trying to atone for accidentally killing this woman in the opening scene. But then uh, he just decides, nah, I'll, you know, leave being a monk and give up the last 10 years of my life so I can go kill people and help you get your daughter back. He just gets gaslit into helping Seagal immediately. Yeah. 
and that's pretty much it. Like, there's just a there's a lot that happens in there. A lot of filler. A lot of talking to like his old buddy who knew some people who knew some people, and of course he knows everybody in Thailand. And that's he gets his daughter back eventually in a big absurd shootout, and it's it's a mess. It's honestly just a mess. Oh, and somewhere in there he like just happens to fall in love with a random woman who meets him. For he does not fall in love with the random woman. No. There's it is no the worst. There. It is the worst. Her entire the, character we'll arc, the entire character arc, is just, I'm going to f*** Jake Hopper. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> like and she does that, and it ends. But that's it. That's the synopsis. It he gets taken, but really dumb. <laughs> taken, but incredibly Jake's just, stupid. Seagal's just like, well, I guess this is the part of the movie where we're supposed to have like a love scene. So sure, I guess. It's awful. And then, yeah. It's truly awful, though. It is. It's just so bad. the worst. We'll get there. I, in my we'll notes, it's called uh, the bleeped out word scene. <laughs> um, Hans, I will say though, you you very you very much in detail describe like the setup, like the first twenty minutes of the movie, and then definitely try it off there. And I, it's because I'm I, not I'm not I'm not saying you have to cover all the details. That's... I think it sh- is somewhat relevant that literal magic, like at its oh, most yeah. apparent, <laughs> oh, so, magic oh, system. So before oh, before we go on. into, it, I'm just saying. I, I want we get we get so deep into the details in our synopsis synopses synopsis whatever synopsis. we get so deep yeah into why the would weeds. you recap the plot during the plot recap synopticon <laughs> well, I'm just saying we get so deep into the weeds that like we and then you take off you say wait I just had to say one thing oh you wait I just have to say one thing you skipped the existence of magic in this movie. I know I'm just saying like we end <laughs> up talking like, about all this stuff anyway I'm just gonna go over main story beats it's taken but worse now we can talk about magic. guys the movie itself skips the existence of magic in the movie until like the final <laughs> yeah. battle so just, i don't really blame really him point. that's true it's just because literally when i was taking my notes one of the notes i have is it's taken until literal magic is introduced i would actually argue yeah. like the first hour is basically taken yeah there and then it becomes like this big like gunfight yeah, with magic that's fair. and that's no, when so it's when, also when taken this yeah. is, at some point Somewhere close to when Seagal first gets to Thailand, he goes to this market to try and meet up with somebody, and then he gets attacked by a bunch of goons. And after he beats up a bunch of goons, like, real, it's, oh, man, the action sequences are getting so lazy. They're getting so bad. Well, I can't even just put in the proper words. I disagree with you on this particular movie. Really? He's, like, he, his hands are, like, flopping around all over the place without any direction, and then it cuts to, like, him turned around, and it's so obviously not actually him. It's a it's a, a stuntman that, I know we said we weren't going to talk about his figure, but it's a much thinner stuntman, and he's actually doing, like, real flips and real rolling around on the ground, and then it cuts back to okay, Seagal's see. face real close up and sweaty, and he's flailing his hands around in front of him. But see, that's the thing. The action in this movie is actually more interesting yeah. and dynamic than some of the previous movies. Like, I was surprised at how much effort is in this movie, just not from Seagal. So, okay, uh, okay, I'm, that's that's fair. Yeah. I'm talking specifically about him, though, yeah. and when he's involved in these, specifically that fish market scene, it's very odd. And then, but but to get to my point... They cap the, the fish market scene or whatever, just market scene. I think fish because that's what comes next. <laughs> because there's just this like voodoo guy that shows up out of nowhere with no context and all the goons run away scared. And one of the goons runs away, slips in slow motion on a yes. tomato and then slides <laughs> yes. ch- like head first on his chest <laughs> on this like giant <laughs> ice bed of fish yes. into a meat cleaver and dies. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think that was it's supposed to be our scene. Having watched it three times, I think that's <sighs> supposed to be our subtle clue that there's magic in this episode because the way the guy runs away is so stupid he th- he doesn't really slip on the tomato he like throws himself onto the fish sand and kills himself and i think it's supposed to be that the shaman mind controlled him to kill himself so that he wouldn't really? give away yeah. the whole thing yeah so like i'm getting i'm getting flavors of marked for death I'm getting a little oh, bit of glimmer man. A little mark for death on the palate. Oh, yeah. A little aftertaste of mark for death. A little aftertaste. <laughs> yeah. So according to the IMDb trivia section, which we have noted some potential inaccuracies before, but trust me here. Um, or just some wild fabrications. Trust yeah, you. Yes. So I'm just completely <laughs> We've false things. Some wild fabrications before, but yeah, just trust you. Yeah. I mean, speaking of, of just wild falsehoods, according to the IMDb trivia section, this film was originally conceived as a Steven Seagal biopic. I refuse to believe that. 
<laughs> someone's someone's having to laugh. He at. does have writing credits on this one. Someone is tugging on our leg here. But more importantly, the director, uh, supposedly, you know, this might be hearsay, but allegedly the director filmed much of the action scenes without Steven Seagal involved at all. He was basically like, I'm just going to do a bunch of cool action scenes. And I think this is maybe why it's even like more obvious than usual oh, okay. that like there's the stunt doubling going on. <laughs> He's just like, I'm going to film a bunch of action scenes and then film some of these close-up inserts. So, like, I just have to be involved with Seagal that... and action choreography as little as possible. But then Seagal insisted on filming his shots in a different way that was incompa- that like didn't work well, didn't flow with that footage that, that already tracks. existed. Of course. Yeah, that definitely tracks. So, apparently, uh, the director is said to have left the set taking the stunt crew with him and literally saying, you finish it yourself. Until the producers uh, convinced Seagal to back down and listen to him. <laughs> like, he literally said, okay, you do it. That tracks. So, I think yeah, that I, I would absolutely believe that everything that we saw. Yeah. Uh, this movie does have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 producers. Oh 12 God. producers. 12. Is, that a, is that a lot? Is that a little? I have to feel That's like a lot of producers. Did they? Um, that's, that's how many it takes to get Steven Seagal to back down, apparently. Right. We've talked before about bad stunt doubling. I think this is the worst stunt doubling we've seen so far. Like you said, the Definitely. person who is like doing the stunts is an entirely not, different physique from Seagal. Not even close. Hey, this is the first time. We've mentioned before, like, oh, you can easily tell the stunt double is a different guy. This is the first time, though, where it actually confused me. Because there's like that scene towards the beginning where it's just like showing him doing his like private security post-CIA stuff. But it just starts off with this guy, like, climbing up a wall into a compound. And it, like, was not until, like, a minute or so later when they show, showed Seagal's face that I actually thought to myself, oh, that's supposed to be Seagal doing all of that. <laughs> like, I just thought we were showing an unrelated... I, I thought we were seeing a whole different character doing stuff. Like, it's just a guy climbing a wall. It does not look like Seagal at all. And then, I'm like, I was so confused for the first, like, couple minutes of the scene. And I'm just like, oh... Like, I didn't just, con- like, say, oh, it's obviously not him. I said, oh, I didn't even yeah. know that was supposed to be him. That is how yes. bad it is in this movie. I have Pretty to, bad. I have to, now that you say that, I'm glad you say that. Because I'm, when I'm thinking back on watching this movie, you're definitely right. The, I, I'm, when I, when I said that the action sequences in this one are getting so bad, it's because I'm only thinking about when Seagal is involved. Mm-hmm. Because when he's not involved, you're, you're right. And I wasn't I wasn't thinking about it in that way. But when he's not there, even when it is a stunt double, I was too focused on like the stunt Seagal. double being obviously not him. <laughs> but when he's not there, it is pretty decent. No, but it is genuinely well, funny. Oh, so I'm looking at the credits for his stunt double. Is he, he has 106 credits as a stunt double. Ooh. Dion Tristov. Including Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Oh, okay. Really? He, he was the stunt coordinator Neat. for that. Oh, nice. Look at you. Nice. Uh, stunt coordinator for Rambo Last Last Blood. Stunt coordinator for the Hitman's Bodyguard. He was uncredited as the stunt coordinator for Hitman's Bodyguard. Hmm. He did stunts for John Wick 2. Uh, he has, like, a Expendables 3, 300 Rise of an Empire, like, a lot of... <laughs> so action he's done a lot movies. better so since 2003. He's, he's, totally out for he's fine. <laughs> oh, he also That's did good. Out for a Kill. Yay. So he's definitely gone up in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Good to hear. Yeah, he's doing fine. Good good work, Dion. But no, whenever so whenever he is on screen, we've talked before, like it'll show Seagal, like you mentioned, Han's super close up, kind of doing some slapping and then cut to like a guy actually yeah. doing the stunts. This is probably the hardest that I laugh though when it happens, because we've seen it like switch to a guy <laughs> from behind. But it is amazing the lengths that this movie goes to have this guy doing the stunts instead of Seagal, but not show Seagal's face. Like, it is Miss yeah. Bellum from the Powerpuff Girls at times, when they're filming action <laughs> scenes just from the neck down. Yes. For yeah. specifically just this reason. It like Well, is and when he was, especially in the in the market scene, there were some, like, I don't know what the move is called. I, I don't know that enough, enough about it. But where he would, like, roll an enemy up, like, over his shoulders and mm-hmm. then slam them down on the ground. There was some really creative... I want to say choreography because it kind of was of not, you know, doing that full <laughs> body in the frame, yeah, mm-hmm. but, not, but sh- not showing face. his face. Yeah. Well, and they did an actually a very good job of it. So, okay. I'm looking at the IMDb credits here. This is fascinating. So in every movie before this, we've seen, I go to like the stunts section and the stunt performers list is like 50 people long. Mm-hmm. Not counting the stunt coordinator, who was also the director of this film, Xia Tung Ching. 
there are six stunt performers in this movie credited as stunt performers according yeah. to imdb that's not hmm. a lot six people that feels well so it was little. a direct-to-video <laughs> it was direct-to-video <laughs> how but okay but how do they high. have Actually, what was the budget uh, uh, what was the budget on this one? Somebody look. According that up. to Wikipedia, it was fourteen point three million, which I have That's trouble a lot. Uh, believing. That That's sounds a lot of money about for this movie. commensurate <laughs> with his other. Well, you know, think back on like <laughs> Most out of for that a was... kill. That was what fourteen million out for a kill. Was it? Maybe my like maybe trash. my viewpoint of this is just a little skewed. Maybe there. most of it was Steven Seagal's like salary. It's so hard to tell how much of the money is being laundered with each strict deal. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I'm just thinking about these two movies, and they both came out in 2003, Out for a Kill and Belly of the Beast. And so they both came out in 2003. So they were being worked on, not if not at the same time, then like right back to back. Mm-hmm. And I can really tell where the effort went. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because just as a piece of filmmaking, just where like the effort went, it's definitely this movie. Like the sets make a whole lot more sense. Yeah, I think they're better made. Mm-hmm. There are like a million extras in this movie. Yeah, that's just true. like hundreds of people walking around the background I've ever seen. Now they could just be like filming random people who were never told Probably. that they were in a movie. Um, but some some scenes, it's like Thailand. this is definitely put together for this movie. Like this when they're in that club owned by his old McQuaid. friend who ends up kind of being like a villain. and It's very confusing. But there are like hundreds of people in this club listening to very quiet music as they just kind of like shuffle around. Yeah. Uh, but like there are a lot of people involved in this movie. Plus they had six whole stuntmen and double that number of producers. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> More producers than stuntmen in this action movie. Twice as many. You know what? I th- I think I made a mistake. Oh. Oh. So I I've made this mistake before. I <laughs> what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Go for it. What are we talking about? <laughs> More compelling character arc than we've seen in any Seagal film thus far. <laughs> yeah, has everyone been paying True. attention to all the Easter eggs in the background of these episodes? We're going to discover the the arch narrative mm. going on in the background. <laughs> Go back and listen to all the episodes and look for the Easter eggs. The Easter eggs. No, so I, I made a mistake. So I relatively recently put a sort of like mini home theater in my basement. And I hadn't put on a movie to test like proper surround sound. I mostly just like watched TV and hung out down there. So last night I got the basement all cleaned up, did all the laundry, bl- new blankets and stuff down there. It's really nice. So last night I put on John Wick <laughs> because I have uh, on Plex, we have a, a 4K uh, Dolby Digital 7.1 surround sound version. Side note, it was fantastic. Absolutely amazing experience. Watching experience, at least. I think that was a mistake, though, because watching this movie today, I was uh, laughing at it because it was really funny, but I was not paying attention to what I should have been, I don't think. Because you're making a lot of good points. I was ready to just, like, shit all over this movie. And you're making a lot of good points that it's actually not nearly as poorly made as i thought it was after watching it i don't think that's the point we're necessarily making (laughs) no i don't that's not the maybe not the point you're making but aaron's making a lot of good points about it that i had Mm, initially disagreed like that's basically what i had said was not the case in my opener thank you i was gonna say this isn't that much of a character evolution though because this is the same thing that happened like two or three weeks ago when we watched john wick four in theaters and then we had to go back and watch the next seagal film that like (laughs) The expectations, the barometer is completely thrown off by John Wick. He just completely, like, uncalibrated the machine. It just happened again. He just did it with John Wick 1 at home this time. He well, completely thrown that, off I his have... Seagal calibration. Yeah. Bef- before that, I watched the Bourne trilogy. <laughs> oh, it was the Bourne trilogy. That's right. Yeah. Well, you need well, to we stop to watching happen... competently made action films. It's completely thrown <laughs> yeah, off. Your, what you, you gotta know, do senses. is be like me and watch nothing but Seagal films. No, for, I can't. Like, I literally can't. Like, do that i have to have a palate cleanser no you i did need that to for the just past watch... three days and it's it's not fun I... you just okay, need to watch yeah, artsy, we... artsy period dramas and then <laughs> we haven't we didn't fine. talk about this that's like isabel, the salty cracker between the taste test <laughs> we didn't really have a proper intro for isabel uh yeah. isabel has watched this movie three times why mm. already why? triple the effort that any of us have done for any of these movies i have watched all of these movies one time you're lucky if I watch these one time and look at the screen the entire time, and you've watched this like three times. Yeah, that was my problem. That's why I had to watch it 
So I watched it the first time. I got to the last McQuaid scene, which I will talk about later. And then I had to mm. stop watching because at that point, I just this is why I keep checking out of the last 20 minutes of this movie because of that scene. Mm, no, that's so, bad. OK, I'll so I that. stopped watching on Saturday, didn't watch yeah. anything on Sunday and then finished it on Monday and then rewatched it again on Monday. It's not really for the past. It's been like the past five days. But I think if you watched a Steven Seagal movie every day, you would literally kill yourself. So. So you just watched the same one three times. We're pretty over close. The same one three times, but over like, you know, uh, one I, had, I had gas days. I have some questions. Yeah. About your viewing experience here. <laughs> mm-hmm. So my, I had never, before this experiment, I had never seen a Seagal film. Have you ever seen a Seagal film before watching Belly of the Beast? I saw one. I was at Hans's house when you did one of the episodes. And okay. I saw that movie. Okay. Um, do, so, do you like, remember which do you remember one? Which one? Was? Uh, there was like a church and his partner's entire house blew up, but his partner didn't actually die. Um, oh! Uh, was it Glimmer Man? No, that was the one with... Uh... That was Glimmer Man. That was yeah, I think that was, was it, I think that's was right. Was it the Glamour Man? Was, was his partner man. well? So did his partner survive to the end of the movie? Yeah, he, he did. Was, was his Glimmer partner man. a big fan of the, the movie what? Casablanca? No, yeah, he was. Okay, was you're Glimmer right. Man. Okay, I know you're you're right. So okay, was... you're, so there are like notes of Glimmer Man in Belly of the Beast. <laughs> sure. There are. Why not? Like, you ever just think about you ever think about the fact that you can just like say things like <laughs> there's no law. You can just say things and it doesn't matter. Well, and you have no, a podcast, so, so it's authoritative someone, even. I, I can and and you can cause saying. you I... can hurt me when you say these things. I was in a conversation with someone yesterday, and they said, "What is that? Oh, you probably don't know, but like, uh, uh, there's this one movie that I watched like in the '90s. It was starring Steven Seagal. I'm like, oh no. Oh, and oh, you said God. you dare enter my ring? You dare challenge me in my own dojo? <laughs> And he's like, I'm pretty sure it was Mark for death. I'm like, actually, that was Glimmer Man. And <laughs> I am equally upset and impressed that already at this point, like, this has come up organically. That, like, like, I've told people I'm watching Skull movies, of course, but, like, there's never been a time where someone's like, ah, uh, could somebody please fact check me on 90s Seagal films? <laughs> Uh, well, and so, and then uh, he was saying, like, that wasn't Kelly LeBrock in there. I'm like, yeah, that was, that was Kelly LeBrock, oh, actually. Um, Aaron, Aaron, you've, you've gone down a dark path no one else you see, can follow. If I had Aaron's apparently encyclopedic knowledge of Seagal films, I wouldn't have had to watch this one three times. It's. <laughs> I'm cursed, but so... <laughs> hey, Isabel, you can also not have Aaron's encyclopedic knowledge of Skull films and also not watch this one three yeah. times. That was always an option. <laughs> yeah, sure, option. but then all you would have got from you me volunteered is, for this. I don't like the last 20 minutes, and that's yeah, all understood. I have to say about this movie. That would be more than enough of a contribution. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that would be fine. That's all we talk about. <laughs> but no, okay, so my question... Did you hear my your... synopsis? <laughs> <laughs> my question about your viewing experience... So you've seen two Seagal films. So you saw like an, a really early movie, and this is uh, his it's Saul. Said, I kind of didn't really pay attention film. to it that much. But like, this is his sixteenth film. Has he really um, gone that da- da- that downhill that fast? Oh, even faster! Oh. Faster! Oh. Even faster! <laughs> you have no idea. You were at the the one that you saw that was earlier was already after the he's gone downhill this fast. Like, <laughs> but he was, was like still ago. holding on by his fingernails to some sort of Apparently. fame. Uh, the the fame was falling out of the air at that point, but he was still holding on to it, yeah. right? So here we are in Belly of the Beast. He has fully fallen from grace. Like, really, no one famous will touch him at this point. Uh, do you do you see a difference? Like, because I am I my I've said in multiple episodes that haven't released yet. So you might not have heard. My brain is broken. My barometer is useless. Like I don't know <laughs> what normal is anymore. Well, if you've been That's, watching s- nothing but Seagal films, other than Seagal, I, I don't. I, I, okay, after the tenth Seagal film, I did watch Babylon. Ah, uh, you broke <laughs> your streak. You have to restart now. Well, so you're Sorry. almost every every ten. If you watch something, you're almost yeah. Every one, ten, right? I'm gonna watch <laughs> a, a nice palate movie. cleanser. That's torture. <laughs> Babylon was not a palate cleanser. I have a whole essay about Babylon. <laughs> if you want to read it. It was a palate cleanser. When we get to the episode, uh, it should be in the Patreon or something. 
yeah, yeah, yeah I think when we get to too. episode 10 we should we should publish a link to your essay <laughs> uh, it's got well, quotes from the bible get, and everything but, but like what, what, well because yeah. I think basically to sum it up is what Aaron's saying is that we've talked the, for the last couple episodes now about entering the flow state yeah where this Isabel's not in the flow state no like something no like, I watched this movie off. three times I had to stop watching oh. I'm not in any flow state <laughs> Like, something jarringly awful and offensive happens in this movie, and, like, yes. if you don't have the flow state to protect you at all, like, you're not fully prepared for exactly Because when, the, like, okay, really there's a particular moment that I don't want to comment on, I want to give you the opportunity to talk about it first, but when it happened, like, I'm so deep in the Seagal, I just thought, well, it's going to happen sooner or later, like, this, this was inevitable in the Seagal career. Like, he's been like, bigoted in every single way possible. Are we talking about, yeah, we're, like, we're talking about Lena now, right? We're going to... yeah. 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 If if you want me to rant, do my Lena rant now. Um, Go for it. So this movie has a femme fatale who is trans. I don't know if they actually intended for her to really be like trans. I don't care. I'm claiming her anyways. Uh, she's the trans femme fatale of this movie. She kills it in pretty much every scene she's in. Very interesting to watch. Was it just the one scene, or did I just completely like not pay enough attention? Well, okay. she's in a couple scenes. She, oh. She's in a couple scenes. To be fair, even earlier, Aaron was like, "Oh yeah, the like the like mystic like shows up and like does this thing." And I'm like, oh, "Oh, he appeared earlier. I thought he just like appeared out of nowhere later in the movie." <laughs> similar here, I'm just like, "Oh, this character just showed up out of nowhere in the movie. I don't recognize this at all." No. Again, this when you watch it three times, you actually know exactly when they show up in the movie, and you know every character's name. I'm just like, "Oh, then this guy shows up like with 20 minutes left. I never saw him before." Okay. Well, the hit woman for the general. And also, um, I'm just going to call him McQuaid because he's McQuaid. Who cares? But, okay, so every scene she's in, she didn't do much. Which I think is par for the course for every female character in this movie. So Yeah, it's a pretty common thing, yeah. At least there's that. Uh, the final fight scene. <sighs> oh, boy. Oh, God. So the entire reason she's trans is so that Steven Seagal can hit a woman and it, the optics aren't that bad because it's 2003 well hey uh, woman and then say a really creepy growth like a one-liner that's terrible in every single way i liked you better when you were a bitch and that is it the was... point of the movie where i was like okay i'm i'm done i think i'm done with this movie yeah that's now. fair yeah it was bad and um yeah so without the flow state mm. even with the flow state i got to that moment and i was just like jeez oh okay we've oh this I is told a new you. thing <laughs> When I said I rated this movie at half a star and it was yeah. the worst movie I'd ever seen, that's why. Just I'm not surprised. Mm. Yeah. But even in the flow state, it can kind of help insulate you, but it doesn't like fully stop because like I said, we're watching this movie, it's like, oh, there's the racism, oh, there's the misogyny, like, you know, oh, there's like, you know, this or whatever. This Surprise is transphobia. I'm, I'm just like, my <laughs> man hit the transphobia, the racism, and the misogyny, like in one line. <laughs> Like my man said, Although, I'm getting everything. I'm ticking off everything. I mean, we hit the misogyny in the opening credits. Like, well, the opening okay, yes, credits I'm not saying it's exclusive over, to this section. Like, what you were watching? So the, the opening credits were going. We're getting like the the name of the director, Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal's name is printed over the naked butt of a woman swimming through a, a swimming pool. For no oh, yeah, reason. No, it's I, you know actually I'm also just gonna throw this in there. He also just hits the homophobia here. I don't know exactly how. I'm just gonna like say it. He also <laughs> because hits, uh, because okay. somehow he's anti Italian here. I don't even know how, but he is. I, he's just Fitch like, McQuaid, Gino Felino, anti Italian. Gino <laughs> Felino, he could never be anti Italian. No, uh, we're, we're done being Italian. He's he's full on portraying. I don't uh, know what don't he's even. doing himself. I don't know what he is. Uh, he's I himself. Think, I don't even think he knows what he is. It's definitely not Italian anymore. No. no. But like if there's a form of bigotry, he somehow hits it in this one scene. But no, he hits the he hits the homophobia because it's like it's like trans it's homophobic in a transphobic way. Because yeah. Lena's attracted to men. She has and a very bad taste in men. <laughs> considering that she saw Steven Seagal and went, I I like him. I uh, hon, you could do also, so much it changes better. nothing about the film at all. Like it, it changes nothing no. about the film. <laughs> she. Oh yeah, no, you could okay. cut out just a solid like two minutes from this movie, and it would not be materially impacted in any way. No, other than it would be less darnly awful. I, <laughs> oh man, there's a better movie in which Lulu actually plays a real role, other than I want to f- the Steven Seagal <laughs> and. <laughs> 
what is this? <laughs> because you've gotten you've you've brought yourself to this point that we hit every episode. This is normally Aaron's specialty. You have your yeah. source, but like you are uncovering, you are sifting for the gold, and you have found the like one flake that could be. It's always media. there. It's always it's, there, and it's always if so. Play obvious script doctor, out. be script doctor for me. Tell me how to make this better. So, okay, I think the real thing you got to do is get Seagal out of there. But failing that, well, you should at least make the other change <laughs> yeah. where Lulu does something and she fights Lena and defeats Lena because Lena killed her roommate who was introduced to, to die in the same scene. Uh, yeah, she, we never oh see her. God. I don't think oh we ever God. see her alive. We never see like, that nope. she has a home. Nope. 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 Like, she literally walks and I'm like, oh, is this her roommate or friend or they something? Don't even exp- they don't even explain who she is. They just show a dead body. They, they I... I, I even have that in my notes. I said, "Who is this person supposed to be?" And then I took it out of my notes because in the next scene they like dub over. It's not even I, like dialogue in the no. in the movie. No. They dub over it while they're in the car. They killed a roommate. No, they yeah. literally they show <laughs> yeah. this dead body and then she has sex with Steven Seagal. And the, no, this what's they show a flashback to the dead body as well. Oh, right yeah. <laughs> yeah, in, case, in case you forgot. <laughs> yeah, just in case you forgot or weren't paying attention. Which is more likely. It's the grossest line, too, because it's she's saying, like, they're, they're eventually they're going to come for me. And he says, no, they won't. And she says, yeah, they, it's oh. something along the lines of, like, yeah, they will. If, oh, no. But he says, he's here. And she said, you won't be here forever. And he says, I will be if you stay with me. And, or something like that. And it's just, and then they go at it. And, oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah. Well, once gross. again, he like, is fully clothed. Yeah, fully clothed. Just, just in case you were confused <laughs> about where you should be looking during the sex scene. Uh, he's fully clothed and she is completely naked. Fully so, clothed and motionless. Yeah. yeah he's just sitting there. It's just thing. happening to him. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a common thing. So yeah, so this is the one trope, thing. Unfortunately. I won't even disagree with you that this is the worst movie that you've ever seen. But it was just funny because like before I had watched it, you sent a message saying this is the worst movie I've ever seen. And the pro like this is why it matters so much to like, you know, understand different people's like lived experiences because you haven't watched like fifteen Skull movies before this. <laughs> Like, this movie is terrible in, like, every single way, but I'm still just, like, it's, like, middle of the pack for these things. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I, I seriously, I feel bad a little bit because I think I've been <laughs> blinded by my, uh, yeah. just just roll with it, with the flow state. I should probably think it's worse than I do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, a, this so is here's one the thing. stars for me, spoiler alert. That's what it would be for me if the Lena stuff wasn't in there. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, now it's a half that. a star. Yeah. So like a, so- a solid middle of the pack movie at 1.5, <laughs> but it's 0. 0.5. Oh, no, no. Oh, like one star is middle of the pack for Seagal movies. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was funny because you said that. You said like this is the worst movie ever. And then I watched like the first like five minutes and I was like, this is like a surprisingly competent action scene. Again, like we said, obvious stunt doubling for Seagal. Yeah. I, like I'm pretty sure my exact words were, this is... What like better than anything we've watched recently? It's gonna have to massively f- up somewhere in order for me to like understand where you're getting at. And I did. I and then I'm like, ah, and oh, there, there, it yep, there it is. There it is. Ah, did we I just said you'll see, and you saw. I saw. You were right. Uh, yeah, you were correct. So, um, um really f- fun coincidence that the random chat bot in our server recommended me for this one. <laughs> <laughs> it was providence do we want to talk i don't know if this could be ahead too much do we want to like talk about like we've talked about like the last 20 minutes or so the part that like isabel like checked out of but i feel like most of the content most of the interesting stuff was in that last like 20 minutes or so yeah let's go for i it. think we should cool yeah i, I, I mean... think we should before we go there we should cover the magic you brought up the magic we should go well, the magic oh, is yeah. in the so... la- the magic is the last 20 minutes well, so, so the first yeah, time I yeah. noticed some kind of magic was happening, I don't know, again, maybe I just wasn't paying enough attention. We were talking about, like, the scene where he's having, like, sex with this woman and she's, like, you know, undressing herself and he's fully clothed. Then later on, he goes and meets this woman and she takes her top off and then, like, puts water on her chest. Oh, and, like, certified this tattoo boot magically mail. appears. Right, yeah. And he just looks at her and goes, okay. And then he just, leaves. He, like, <laughs> nods. And that's he, the he like go. nods. Just I did not know what was away. happening there. That was also awful. Was there something? Is there something more I need to know about that? Is that like I have, he introduces magic? I have two notes for that scene. And it's, what the heck is this scene? And no, really, what the heck is this scene? <laughs> my note for that scene is, oh my God, the scene with the water responsive tattoo or whatever fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> because like... There were a hundred ways for him to get the information that... Okay, so part of this movie 
part of this movie that we didn't really talk about that is kind of important because, to the plot. Well, it is, is that, it though? Okay, but here's my thing. Because I need, in order to talk about why this scene is dumb, I need to talk about the what it's supposed to be communicating. And so in the movie, uh, Seagal's daughter and is it a senator again? Senator John Winthorpe. Yeah. Ah. There are other Always. forms. John of Winthorpe's daughter, than Sarah Winthorpe. and vice presidents. Um, <laughs> But so no, it has to be something a... that it has to be office that Biden has personally held in order for it to be in a skull film. Skull's <laughs> <laughs> daughter I... just happens to be best friends with some senator's daughter, and they get kidnapped in Thailand. Well, their boyfriends get killed, and yeah. they get kidnapped in Thailand. And everyone is told that it was an Islamic extremist group. Oh yeah, we didn't uh, talk about that. Yeah, called Abu Karaf, something like that. Abu Karaf. Yeah. Um, and so like they were blamed for the kidnapping. And it turns out that actually it was the government of Thailand or like this it was, general. It was McQuaid who was working with the Thai special forces and General John Tafan, who hates See. Muslims so much that he will work with McQuaid. Uh, and that's that's his character. <laughs> yeah, because McQuaid was is like doing he's like dealing drugs and stuff and wanting to get into arms dealing. And that's what the the Muslim extremist group abu Karaf apparently does but they didn't but, let him in because of 9 11 like seagal says it's because of 9 11 and doesn't think, explain why i think it's because sense. of 9 11 and mcquade is american and ex-cia mm-hmm. so he mm-hmm. wouldn't work with them something but... or other and so the leader of abu Karaf sends Mongol. a message to seagal saying hey i want to meet because like you know and i know that i didn't do this and so uh, we'll no work there. together or something they don't end up actually working together by the way seagal <laughs> does all of this with his the one other guy um but he there were a million ways to send this message like a letter a guy showing up and saying the leader of this group wants to meet no instead he sends the a single message Certified tattooed email. on a naked woman's chest but you can only see it if she pours water over her chest. <laughs> because it's then like a... is a certified boob guy, so he, that's the only way to make sure he reads the message. Except is he like we've talked about? Is he movies, though? Like he does not seem interested. He like wants sex to happen to him, but it does not want to be at all in any way. Like actually, uh, it, an active. You, you hit the nail on the head the first time. He wants it to happen to him. Yeah. Yeah, he wants it, it to happen. Full so stop. He wants women to just show their breasts to him, so he can just kind of vaguely nod at it. Yeah. And then turn around and leave. Yeah. And then turn around and leave. <laughs> he doesn't seem what a bad happy scene. about this. Confused. No, okay, here's because this is a wider like, thing. Is he into it? Supposedly Not that he should be, but like Supposedly the overarching plot of this movie is taking. He's trying to get his daughter back. But when you actually watch him, every single part of the movie that like directly relates to him actually getting his daughter back, he has like zero reaction. No. Like, he gets new information, he learns good news, like, even when we get to the end, whenever he finds her, he, like, barely acknowledges her. His partner is, like, actually, like, okay, yeah, we got it, let's kind of protect him, like, one who actually covering them, like, helping the them out. Seagal doesn't yeah. even acknowledge his daughter when they rescue him, like, he gets closer throughout this movie to, like, rescuing his daughter and has zero change in, like, nope. any, any way he is acting. Honestly, like, think so about that. He's completely disinterested in, in the, his actual quest. Sunti defeats the entire Thai special forces to save yes. the girls. <laughs> he defeats the entire <laughs> s- to die Thai for forces it. while holding like both of the girls' hands and like walking them through <laughs> the like, building. He he finds like two Humvees blasting him with like you know <laughs> mach- mounted machine guns, and he has like one gun, one handed, and takes out the entire army while Seagal just the whole fist thing. fights one dude. Well, because everyone has the infinite ammo cheat turned on. That was I. <laughs> Like That's so there's a scene in like the middle no, of the movie, not... one of the middle the train of the action scene? film s- scenes. The train where he's scene. like, boom, I actually boom, boom, loved boom, boom, the fight boom. in the train yard. Oh, yeah, I actually, loved it. I thought it looked like a fun game of like paintball going on. Okay, I was... okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's one I have in my notes. Okay, and you you gotta ride with me on this one. Okay, there's one shot that they used twice. Nice. Yeah, that could have been lifted from a Wes Anderson movie. I mean, they use a lot. They use a lot more than just one shot twice. But the West Anderson movie is twice at least that could unique. Be from Anderson movie. Yeah. So yeah. there's this one shot <laughs> where it's like it's a wide shot, 
and it's everything's like monochrome. Everything's brown, uh, just because all the trains are like rusted out. They're they're not in use. The, the dirt and rusted trains, and the sky is kind of hazy. So it's like all gray and brown. And there are these guys standing on top of the trains, just standing like perfectly still, just like firing their guns into the ground, kind of aimlessly. And it looks like it could have been a shot from Grand Budapest Hotel. <laughs> okay, truthfully though, the entire like. I've never seen staging that. and like action oh of that gosh. scene is like really weird because you have that you have a mm-hmm. scene where he like jumps onto a rail car that is very slowly moving and he's just staying <laughs> on it and shooting at guys who can't <laughs> the entire time I was thinking so my favorite part like, my favorite part hold, my favorite part is he's like in his gunfight he's just like shooting until like the exact second he is like immediately surrounded by like 10 cops who are all like one foot away from him like it just boom 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 and then they just because like it's following movie logic where if they're off screen they don't exist like they all of a sudden just like boom, are next to him and he just like puts the gun away and he's like okay i surrender and it yeah. is comically it is like it does seem like a kind of wes anderson like framing thing where like yes. they only exist once they like enter your line of view yeah it is such a weird gunfight for so many reasons because of all uh. those weird little things so I found out because he kind of he does reload, uh, by which I mean he pulls a slide back on his gun a couple times. But uh, <laughs> during that train scene, it's about once every 15 to 16 bullets. So if he's using a nine millimeter, apparently that's accurate, which is weird oh. because nothing else in that scene makes sense. <laughs> like you can see- To be fair, I think that's just by sheer dumb luck. I don't think that, that is probably yeah. by sheer dumb luck. Yeah. Because then he shoots nine and then actually does a real reload and then gets captured by the cops. Well, he does that thing where he lifts the gun up above his head and releases the magazine and then puts a new magazine in it. Yeah, Yeah. just as a side note, his partner has his one reload later in the movie that just like looks so much cooler than any reload that Seagal has done. His partner, everything that Byron Man in this movie looks so much cooler. He does this one reload and I'm like, that's an action movie reload. It's been a while since we've seen one of those in one of these movies. Yeah. So um, <laughs> another thing that By- Byron Man does better than Seagal is Seagal loves doing that thing where he disarms the enemy and takes their weapon out oh, of their yeah. hand. Just, oh but it looks God. so bad every yeah. time. He fails to grab the weapon kinda, eh, like most of the time. And well, Sunti does it like, once. Chucks it onto the ground. Sunti does it once against it Fisher Raid. And I was like, like that is the coolest does action in squad scene it. in this entire movie. You know, in like police squad, when he like pretends like he's gonna sneeze and then just slaps the gun out of someone's hand, Seagal basically does that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're right; he does have a really cool. Yeah, yeah. It's right before the really awful scene. Yeah. Well, no, it's right after the really awful scene. Oh, you're right. You're right. Uh, but I will man, point I, out with I this train yard here. Squad. This is the first time I think in a movie where he's actually been like received somewhat the correct response from like the local government to like the blatantly like violent and like ah but just don't you know that they're doing. corrupt but yeah it's well, only because they're corrupt yes. but it's like he's getting arrested and taken in i'm like oh is this the first time he's been like fully arrested for like going on a rampage well that's so he can have a scene where he beats up all the cops I, with his handcuffs on i understand that and then but Leon this, you out. gotta take what you can get <laughs> take the <laughs> little morsels right you get smacked you're given a morsel this- I think that's the only time it gets hit in this entire movie when the cop is beating Probably. him with a fucking stick. Probably. Because every other time, even when he's being voodoo dolled into like submission, he still blocks every single one of the general's attacks. Oh okay, that's yeah. that's a good segue though to the last 20 minutes. So, so let's go to this movie is contained in the last 20 minutes. The evil guys have this voodoo slash voodoo Sh- shaman know, characterized like representation animus. of voodoo what was that it's like animus hindu voodoo well, yeah. yeah someone so made something up like there's there's like a hindu guru on one side and then there are the the those are like the evil guys and yes. then you have the buddhists on the other side yeah, yeah. And those are guys the, have that's this good one dude with a voodoo doll Seagal has like 30 buddhist monks like praying aggressively for him <laughs> yeah and they just yeah magic each other out (laughs) oh wait this is actually where my favorite (laughs) my favorite line in the movie comes in yeah because my favorite quotes in this movie are anytime anytime john tapon opens his mouth to say something uh because he has just the most ridiculous lines and um the one i'm talking about is you might defeat me but you cannot defeat the magic (laughs) <laughs> that was uh, gonna be my quote yeah. <laughs> he's been in just... several of these movies this is not his first Seagal movie to be fair they do defeat the magic <laughs> just with other magic no he was in yeah. out for a kill as well really yeah 
He I mean he worked on two movies in 2003 with Steven Seagal. Oh, oh man, poor guy. <laughs> Actually, just real quick, as a side note, Tom I made I made a note that I had to uh, read this. This isn't even from the movie itself. This is from the Wikipedia page, but I have to read something. Do it. So, again, the main... So, he's in a fist fight with uh, John Tapon, and they're, you know, kind of, like, matched, and then John Tapon uses the dark evil magic against him, but Seagal has the Buddhist monks doing, like, the good magic against him. Um, and he ends up, like, basically just, like, throwing the dude. He does, like, a really slow motion, like, wire foo, f- like, fly what? into, like, this, like shelf against the wall and like that's where he dies really but slowly <laughs> it's very slowly so it just looks like he's like sliding on the conveyor belt like that dude earlier in the movie but just midair <laughs> the, the wire it doesn't work look like he this... went flying it looks like he's being dragged the wire work yeah. in this movie is uh subpar we'll but i need to yeah. read to you i don't know who, the contributor behind this but i need to read you wikipedia's attempt at describing this scene <laughs> let's see here Meanwhile, Soon T kills the rest of the cops while Jake battles with John Tapon in the upstairs living room. Jake kills count the number of times that Jake kills like that John Tapon dies. Jake kills John Tapon by disarming him and breaking his neck, killing him. He ends the fight by throwing John Tapon into a display cabinet which crushes his spine, killing him. Jake breaks John Tapon's <laughs> neck by throwing him, which kills him, killing John Tapon. <laughs> 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 this isn't no, like a comment on the movie the itself. the most coherent way you could describe this scene. <laughs> but this is just like honest. a person trying to understand what happens. <laughs> <laughs> like for some, I, I because I again I watched this movie once. I'm not watching this like three times. I'm not putting that amount of effort. No, so I'm like, I'm oh, nothing. let me just look through the Wikipedia recap to make sure there's nothing important that I missed. And I got to that part, and I thought I was like having a stroke. I'm like, am I reading this wrong? <laughs> and then I'm like, no, they just. <laughs> He kills well, him he by also, doing this, thus killing him, and then kills like him, killing him with this killing. <laughs> he does like and a weird five his, finger yeah. death punch thing, thus killing him. And then him. he like finger punches breaks him in the trachea, throat, killing him. And and then he like tai chi. He does like a key him. charge like up a and Hadouken. like killing him. Kamehameha uh, across the room and flings him into the wall where he crashes into this thing, killing him. Yeah, Frankie is fine, <laughs> killing him. <laughs> But I, uh, yeah, I, it was wild. Because I have so, some good news and some bad news. Oh, okay. what's that? Um, the bad news is that we still have to watch like forty more of these things. Well, you, you just said Tom Wu has been in a couple of these movies, so I, yeah. I just went real quick and I checked on something. Um, Byron Man, it's good news. Byron Man is in three more Seagal movies coming. Oh up. my gosh! But he's better than bad, that. Bad news. Byron Man had to be in three more Seagal movies. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Uh, poor guy. We've got A Dangerous Man, Absolution, and True Justice. Oh, so he's... oh wait, no, True. hold on. True Justice was a TV show. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. This is the most TV show. Patreon content. But the I know that one oh, that you mentioned no. is from like 2018 or something, so he's in one of these. Like, But looking at the non-magical parts of their fight at the end, I there were so many times I was watching this, and like something happens, and I just go, oh, f- off like that entire fight <laughs> the fucking bullet time with the arrows <laughs> okay yes because john Dupont has bow and arrow steven seagal has gun there's like what is it he shoots an arrow and steven seagal like shoots the arrow out of the air with the gun then he shoots another arrow but seagal misses but he Which, deflects like, the arrow and then he shoots another arrow and, and then shatters. there's a third one he cuts it in half with a katana so he like shoots one out he like dodges one and then he cuts <laughs> one down with the katana except i will point out he doesn't do- actually dodge that second arrow. He shoots an arrow. Seagal tries to shoot it out of the air, misses, and then like the, the arrow, arrow hits disappears. the wall. But no, here's the thing: the arrow hits a wall. It like hits like you know this wooden thing that Seagal like slides behind to kind of dodge the arrow. But it's not like the arrow was going to hit him, and if he didn't move, he would be hit. The arrow Which hits is... the wall that is in front of Seagal. If Seagal does not move yeah. at all, that arrow still hits the wall. Like this guy just <laughs> shot an arrow at the wall, not at Seagal. And they made and it look know. like Seagal dodges it, but there was no possible way for it to hit him. And we know that he can he shoot never an arrow. Tough. Because earlier he shoots that apple out of the guy's hand. Okay. And, but if then, this happens so again, like, you will be the apple, which is out of yeah. context. <laughs> I really gosh. So there's like there's a scene Just so or many much earlier lines. in the movie. So that's like five minutes before the big final fight scene starts, is we see him firing this yeah. this bow for the first time. There's a scene like much earlier in the movie where we see him like practicing his kung fu. If you just replaced that with a scene practicing his archery, it would have made the final fight scene make a whole lot more Script sense. Doctor. Like we find out that this is his weapon of choice 
five minutes before the final battle. Except if it showed him practicing, then you would assume that he went into shoot an arrow into a wall next to Seagal that Skull doesn't have to dodge at all. Well, you but you would might. assume that I would, when he yes, shoots an apple out of the guy's vil- That the main hand. villain is dangerous and right. capable. I would have to assume that, yeah. Yeah, that's the only problem. Um, the only <laughs> thing worse, the only thing that made me say, oh, f*** off even more than, like, Seagal shooting slash, slash, slash slicing these arrows out of the air is when the guy grabs a spear, he switches from his weapon of choice to a spear, he tries to stab it at Seagal, Seagal grabs onto the spear and is, like, literally hanging on it while the dude continues to charge forward yeah. as if Seagal weighs, wire like, work. five pounds. <laughs> it is absurd. The wire work. The wire oh, work. Oh, my God. It's amazing. I feel like I was ascended during that entire final 20 minutes the first time I saw it. Not as good as the wire work in uh, Out for a Kill, which I think that was Tom Wu as well. Possibly. And we need to point out the entire time Skull's just having this fight, his partner is literally has these two women. He's just holding their hands, like pulling them through this building, like dragging them into the line of fire repeatedly and just miraculously not getting shot, even when it's an entire militia with two Humvees with mounted guns. And they just run through the bullets, not getting hit. That's their escape plan. To be fair, but uh, this isn't really being fair at all. This is just me playing devil's advocate. He does get shot at he least once. Literally the devil. Yeah, Seagal is literally. You don't literally. see it happen. He you does, don't see it. Ha- the, it happens off screen. The two women that are just being dragged behind him but through the fine. middle of a gun battle behind no cover are totally fine. Yeah. Which, okay. Well, you see, that's because the women in this movie aren't people. That's true. <laughs> they aren't people characters. Get shot. Women don't get shot. <laughs> they're like set pieces at best something i want to say i mentioned before that seagal seems to show very little interest in like actually rescuing his daughter at the end they do have like him and his daughter like hug and he's just like okay cool something that i do love is that he's like hugging his daughter and then the other girl like tries Comes to in. get in on the hug and seagal completely <laughs> shuts her like yeah. she's just kind of attaching herself to seagal's side and he is not even acknowledging that she exists it is so yeah. awkward there's also at the very end it's supposed to be a funeral for Sunti. It's like a little procession and Yeah, which which would you know, that makes sense. It's that's cool. But <laughs> wouldn't have had to happen if Sunti was the main character. Yeah. Behind as Seagal's carrying his uh urn, and behind him walking in this procession is his daughter, <laughs> right beside and dressed in a very similar outfit to uh Lulu. <laughs> <laughs> who's like looks to be about the same age uh, yeah also we just, didn't get the scene where just his, gross. his daughter asks who is this woman yeah oh, she's a waitress <laughs> from the club owned by the guy who orchestrated my kidnapping that's who met you two days ago and is and... my same age <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool dad yeah <laughs> cool no again Neat. again like we've talked about i want to be very clear that the flow state is not excusing any of this that something like that happens like he meets a woman that is like 30 years his junior and of course they have a sex scene i'm not saying oh we're in the flow state so it's like okay we accept it it's just like yeah that's gonna happen yeah just used to it yeah. that's sad i hate to say that but it was like yep that's when this movie does this that's when this movie is gross in this way this is when this movie is gross in this other way yeah I, you know which, it's, um, speaking of, that's okay. not going away. Talking about the <laughs> unintentionally ways he's creepy towards his daughter. Um, when he meets and he's talking to the like terrorist group to like really like say, oh yeah, we can help each other, and then not actually help each other. I'm just here for yeah. the girls. Yes, this line when it's Seagal's face and it says nothing personal for me. Close cut in, super close up on his face. It's all about the girls. I am just here for those girls. Not delivered like that. Uh-huh. Not delivered the way I did. Delivered. It, with all of the charm of like I'm a thrice divorced girls. man in a Hooters. Like, I'm just here for the girls. <laughs> and that's how he's describing trying to rescue his daughter and her friend. It is so creepy, bad. both in and out of context. Yeah. <laughs> oh, while we're on the subject of his daughter, something yeah, that sure. I noticed during the opening, uh, his entire refrigerator is packed with food that his daughter made him. This man does not know yes. how to cook. His daughter lives with him and takes care of him. And uh, well, that he chooses not to eat. That he chooses not to eat. I was just yeah. saying, it's it's not frozen just, meal instead. It's not just like food. It's like all literally labeled, have this on Thursday, have this and then this. It is instructions you would give a toddler. No red meat. I'm serious. Yes. But he's too cool. He's too much of a man. He doesn't need to listen to her dumb womanly instructions. His daughter um, who ugh, loves him. <laughs> 
This is another. I like how. Just... Oh, good. I like how every single line that his daughter says is either to him or about him. You're telling me this movie doesn't pass the Bechtel test? Wow. <laughs> no, I just mean not even like every single. It's every oh, yeah. single line. My dad's gonna come get us. Oh, that's my dad. Oh, yeah. And even some of the lines to him are about him. Hey, shut up. My dad's awesome. Or my dad's a good man. Like, I hope you'll be. Oh, yeah. I do want to point out the way Wikipedia um, s- like summarizes. This was like, I don't know. It's weird because it feels like it was written by a fan or written by someone who worked on this movie. Following his retirement, Jake becomes a successful businessman running a private security business while being a devoted father to his now adult daughter, Jessica. I've never seen nothing that actually no? demonstrates he's devoted. Other, like, it's very much like tell, don't show. But it's like the plot synopsis <laughs> online has to tell because the movie doesn't even try to tell you that. Yeah, not at all. The only other main notes that I have are, what is it? Oh, there's oh. A, like a there's that one point he and his partner are there together and these dudes like show up with like swords and they have the sword battle and the music that plays during it oh, is Bob like, a, eh. it's like adjusted for inflation from 2003. This music goes like hard. Like it's a whole yeah. time it's happening. I am just like... This movie is trying, and for 2003, this is like, this, this, it is, like, they're jamming. And the problem is there's only one song listed in the credits, so it is, like, the song from this scene. And I tried it. It's so hard to find this, like, song online. I did. I, it's you not have... spelled, like, how they... Okay, it's I was trying to search for that. I found, like, spell. dead like... pages. Like, that would be the lyric pages for this, but then they didn't actually have the lyrics and didn't actually have the ability to listen to it. It's ba ba, not yeah. ba bore. So it's like B-A-H-B-A-U. That's how it's recognized. Mm, okay. By Silly Fools. And it does, in fact, go hard. I'm going to make a so Lena boring. fan cam set to this this song. <laughs> it's how hard it goes. <laughs> I want to tell you not to do that, but I would actually very much like to see that. Yeah. That'd be kind <laughs> Just of for the sheer effort of it. I'm going to go get a Windows XP computer from upstairs, plug it in, and use Windows Movie Maker and make a Lena fan cam with that in the background. It's like when you watch one of the strength competitions where they pull like an entire train car behind them. Like just for the sheer effort of it, I can't look away. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, also he at one point mentions his friend and he says his name. Uh, he tries to leave a note for the gal and he says, oh, this is a number. Like, you know, if I don't make it, like you green shouts to my friend Tom Collins. And I said, why did you make his oh. name Tom Collins? Like, it oh, just sounds yeah. like he's, me- it just sounds like he's fucking with her. He's like, here's my notes from my friend Tom Collins. And she's going to call it up and it's going to be like some random bar from back home. And they're like, yeah. Tom Collins. Oh, of course. Yeah, you can come here and order one. And they hang That's up another and thing. <laughs> I was like, it, is he fucking with her? It feels like they sent this movie to a focus group and then it came back with notes because we get all that sunty, like, 80 art exposition, which we haven't touched mm. on yet. But we also get the scene after he hands her the money. They hug it out, and then it cuts away to like a separate thing. And eighty yard over that is Lena's voice, Lena's actor saying that she doesn't want to accept the money, and she'll be waiting for him when he yeah. returns. And it feels like that was added in later because some audience didn't like that she took the money. That wouldn't surprise me. That's a good. That's a good fan theory, or not fan theory. That's a good <laughs> hey, watch theory. <laughs> How dare you insinuate that I'm a fan of this movie? Yeah, I apologize. I'm sorry. I would never insinuate such a thing. Um, I just have like a few little notes left. So the opening sequence just doesn't matter at all. What is he doing? What you mean the like he's uh, robbing CIA some work. guy's house? Like he's oh, doing oh, data. That's his private security form. He's doing he opens a safe. He also steals a bottle of water on the way out. <laughs> yeah. That... <laughs> okay. Except I'm not gonna lie. Actually, this whole sequence is one of the better parts of the movie. Like I was. I actually, like how I kind of had a little smile on my face during this part. I like how when he leaves, he leaves like he's leaving a hotel room and is like, "Yeah, is everything in order enough? Am I not gonna be sent a bill from housekeeping for this? Yeah, it looks yeah. good." And then leaves. I, yeah, I but, don't know. He's. But that scene was surprisingly charming. Like that was like what that's the scene I was watching when I was like. Are you sure this movie's gonna suck as well? This is like better than most of what we've been seeing lately. That part. Well, he also slides song. around on the floor for like half of that. And it's scene. very funny. <laughs> Why are like we he has a really long. He'll slide like fifteen feet. And it's very funny along the floor every time. It is very funny every time. Have you seen it three um, times? It is. Da, 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 da. Why is there no music in the club? Everyone's just kind of shuffling around in silence. <laughs> it's the they one part they forgot to hear. Oh, okay. So when he goes to the club and he talks to his old his old CIA buddy, mm-hmm. uh, who ends up having been the orchestrator of all this stuff, uh, I wrote in my notes here. So I'm not just I didn't just write this after the fact. 
I said, Seagal admitting he needs help, question mark, explanation point. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, no, wait, prediction. This guy is going to betray him. And (laughs) so I was, I made two predictions. One, this guy's going to betray him because Seagal has never asked a single person for help in any of these movies that did not betray him. Uh, And then Seagal had to fix it himself. He never asks for help and then receives the help. So I knew that wasn't going to happen. My second prediction about this was wrong, uh, was that Seagal knows that he's going to be betrayed, and he was just playing him from the beginning. Are you sure that was wrong? It's a little vague. I'm going to say that I was wrong about that. I'm very close to right about it, because he does figure out later on that he was betrayed. Like, pretty quickly he figures it out. Uh, But not the first time that he went and saw him. Like, when he went to go see him, he didn't, like, already know, which is a very Seagal thing to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the scene where he goes and visits uh, Byron Mann when he's, like, in the Buddhist monastery, none of the lines that Seagal speaks in that entire scene sound like him at all. Yeah. Like, it sounds like it was 80 yard over by a different actor. Yeah. Doing like a Seagal impression. I, I'm like 90% certain it was. I don't, because he, I think because he says a couple lines in Thai and they needed someone who could do that. And I want to say <laughs> that like Seagal and Seth was like, no, I could do this. And afterwards, I like, just get an impersonator. Just, you know, don't even get an impersonator. Like just find a guy at the office who has a Seagal impression and get him to do this. It'll be <laughs> better. He, he said, yeah, I could definitely do that. And then he turned into, uh, is it Brad Pitt and in, Inglorious Bastards? Bongiorno. Bongiorno. <laughs> My Buddhist friend. Um, and then, uh, why is it always American money? Every time money is shown in this movie, <laughs> it's American money. Greenbacks. Again. <laughs> that's a not? common theme in all these movies so far you were the uh, you were the one that pointed it out in right, the last one i didn't even right. notice oh yeah the uh, american money from an eastern european truck in a chinese laundry in paris <laughs> <laughs> so this was not quite that bad but <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad i assume american money in thailand um Bridge but, uh, oh, and, and then, they uh, just reuse. They keep the same like prop money for all of his movies, and they've just been reusing it because they can't afford. He more. just carries it around. He's like Floyd Mayweather, <laughs> but all the money's fake. Unless that's how they're but, laundering uh, the money. They put it in the set, and then they just <laughs> take it. <home. laughs> You're onto something now. Uh, oh, and then my final just weird uh, note that isn't. This is not important, and. The movie thinks it can get away with it by acknowledging how dumb it is, but why send the meeting time for the secret meeting with the arms oh my dealers God. in English by fax? Why? They, they even they, put that. He even uh, says the boss would kill you if yep. he knows he sent you. He sent that over fax, and it, it happens. The fax comes in, and then he gets a phone call. Yeah. No, he to he reiterate calls, the same information. He does call. The person. Does he oh, is that it? Yeah. I thought he got the phone. Oh, he must have. Maybe this guy no. just sent the message to Woof. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> the, the fax comes in. Reference uh, yeah. Because I gotcha. someone's I gotcha. stupid and decided fax was the way to send this secret arms deal. But again, and I think having it's applied to be Lena. Having uh, something happen in a dumb way and then just saying, oh, that was dumb doesn't absolve you of this movie. No. no. They could have just had. It. They could just had Lulu find nothing. Fitch comes into the place, so she hides back there. And then he makes a phone call and confirms the meet date there. And that's how she gets the information. And it would have yeah. not required any lampshading. Still. Again, Isabel, you perfectly understand this podcast. This is something that happens every time. We're like, oh, if you made the small change, it would flow better, make more sense, like be better in every way, be easier to film. Like this yeah. happens at least once every episode. Oh, and then... Um... I do like that near the end of the film, like right before the big action sequence, we have 20 minutes left in the movie and you've entered the flow state. You have no idea what's going on, but for it to be a movie, you have to have like some context for like the, the final action scene. So Seagal goes to Fitch's club and just explains the plot of the film to him. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> he says, oh, you are Fitch, and you used to work for the CIA, but you, you got into drug dealing, and you wanted to get into arms dealing, too, but because of 9-11, the Muslim terrorists didn't let you, and so you made a deal with this corrupt government official to kidnap my daughter and the senator to, you know, get into this business, to get back at uh, the the extremists for not letting you get into arms dealing now let us fight no like, yeah honestly <laughs> the only thing i needed there for was for him to explain how magic suddenly starts happening and then i'd be like thank you for like recapping the entire movie <laughs> but like, and, and, i think the movie knows that this was impossible to follow like, honestly it is worth pointing out that we have like crowbarred references and discussion of 9 11 into like the last like five of these episodes this is the first time that the movie actually like acknowledges and responds to like the real world of real yeah world of i mean also the movie kind of crowbarred it in there themselves right but it's well, first time they did the force. movie the movie is about a muslim extremist organization being Nominally. framed by a government for terroristic activities damn i can't believe iron man 3 ripped off this movie so hard <laughs> <laughs> which is like a wild in 2003 that's like a wild way to crowbar in yeah 11 it did strike me that the abercroft are not the bad guys in this movie no i mean they're bad guys they they do lots of crimes and stuff they're oh yeah not i'm not saying <laughs> i'm not under no circumstances do you gotta hand it to them but <laughs> no <laughs> oh what's the what's but the... this one thing they didn't actually do yeah, regarding my previous tweet, you do not gotta hand it to Abu Karab. <laughs> so we've got an office reference, we've got a drill reference, we're hitting all the all the peaks here on this one. Uh, do we want to talk about the cast a little bit? There's not a whole lot here. We're 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 getting to the point in these Seagal movies that there's not a whole lot to say about the cast. I will say I recognized one of the like government guys played by Colin Stinton and. It is because he was in a couple of the Bourne movies uh, as, like, generic, like, government guy. He plays, like, a, a government guy in a lot of movies. He was in Captain America, the first Avenger. Like, this feels like we're pulling... So before, it felt like, in, like, the earlier Seagal movies, we were pulling people who would later go on to do, like, starring roles or, like, co-starring roles and stuff. Now we've gotten to the point where... It's mostly people who have done nothing that I've ever heard of, but then a couple people who have been background characters and things that I have seen. Mm -hmm. And so I have like a vague recognition of these people, but it's only a couple. So like Colin Stinton, background character in, uh, I don't know, The Machinist, which he did right after Belly the Beast. Um, um, I mean, for this one, also for me personally, Byron Man is that one. Like he was in The Big Short. That was the first like other movie yeah. that he was in. I'd recognize him from. But oh, also yeah. The Man with the Iron Fists and... Um, the TV show Arrow. Yes. So he is actually like, oh, okay. He also he does stuff like this. He, was an he also carbon. did voice acting for Sleeping Dogs. Oh, did he? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes, he, yeah, did. he did. My yeah. man. Yeah. He was in a few episodes of The Expanse, Altered Carbon. And he was in Call of Duty Black Ops 2, but Sleeping Dogs is cooler. <laughs> Good on you for me. Good on you for that. Byron, my man. Vincent oh. Riotta, who in this played... I'm trying to find who he played. Oh, he Fitch. It was Fitch, the club owner, the former CIA club owner. Uh, he's actually been in. Oh, he awesome. has 126 acting credits, so I won't go over everything. But more recently, he's been in like uh, the Two Popes. He was in Zack Snyder's Justice League, House of Gucci. He was in Tar. Oh, so he's doing oh, all God. right now. He's also in a in an upcoming Seagal movie. <laughs> well, they can't all be. 2006 good. though. It's yeah. Okay, something actually that I do appreciate. It took appreciate. him a while. We, we've made many <laughs> parallels and references to the film Taken. Um, I will say that Kavork uh, Malikian, who plays Ferdinand Zadir in this movie, is in Taken 2. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Full circle, man. So he was in both of the movies that are Taken, but worse. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. Wait a second. <laughs> the director of this film, Xia Tung Ching? Yeah. Was an uncredited stunt director, stunt coordinator for Sam Raimi's Spider Man. Oh, hey. Hmm. I mean, and it is also, we talked about it at the beginning. It's also worth pointing out that these are not movies that I think any of us have seen, but he did like 20 movies in Hong Kong cinema before this that people seemed to actually really like and respect. And then he got like dragged yeah. into this like Seagal movie. 
Yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe even the ones after that he's done afterwards. He only did three after this, but he did one as recently as 2019. Those could also probably be better. Again, this is just completely uninformed. I've not seen these movies. But it seems like he had a respectable career as like an action, like Kung Fu film director. Uh, and he's done a whole lot of stunt directing yes. and action directing after this, but not a whole lot of film directing. I mean, and you can definitely tell he has a like skill has... and a craft to that, even just watching this one, because like... Yeah, the action scene. Everything like he's Kung able Fu to do around is... Seagal is pretty good. Yeah, the and like the Kung Fu action is by far the best part of this movie. And it is, like I'll point out, I was watching this movie, it is just the best action that we've seen in one of these movies in a while. I was like, oh, there's actually yeah. like effort in this one. That's nice. Yeah. Refreshing. What would you uh what would you watch instead what of this? What would I watch instead of this? Uh oh yeah, oh, yeah. this hour. is so Isabel, this is a segment <laughs> Rush that hour. Aaron has introduced where we list movies that like you know oftentimes we compare these movies we watch to other ones where we just list ones that say instead of watching this just watch this other one instead yeah i'd say either watch rush hour or the first taken film or both at the same time <laughs> that'd be about as coherent as this movie probably <laughs> i like both of those yeah i respect this i'm gonna say police squad nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's got nothing to do with this <laughs> <laughs> but man, is except it so he much does better. the same like disarm technique that Steven Seagal does, just play for laughs. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, I'm say watch literally any Jackie Chan movie. Mm, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I just picked Rush Hour because uh, it's got cops in it, and I liked it. <laughs> Shanghai Noon would be a good pick. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to go for a non-obvious one here because like you know the most obvious one is like Taken or something. What was the one that I I said I hadn't watched something? Do you have Grand any, Budapest I was Hotel? Have any idea how little that narrows it down? <laughs> um yeah sure watch any like wes anderson movie instead of this one hell you know what i'll even give you right now i don't know if this will still be a trend by the time this episode airs but right now one of the trends that i'm getting on tiktok a lot i'm sorry hans one of the trends i'm getting on tiktok a lot oh. is that people are doing like so trying to imitate the wes anderson it. style it's like my day at the cafe so like you know as a wes anderson movie so i would say watch any wes anderson movie about this hell you could just watch like a compilation just like a stream of these like Wes Anderson style attempting TikToks and have a better time than watching this. Actually, I'll go further. You can watch any meme compilation and feel like you spent your time better. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so you can also watch my uh, Lena fan cam set to Bob Bar, and you'll have a much better go. time of it. That's my recommendation. You got to make it happen now. It'll be on the Patreon. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you didn't think you were going to listen to this episode about a Seagal movie and get a recommendation for Wes Anderson films, but that's what I'm saying. We're f***ing artists over here. Like, we're not taking the easy route. <laughs> All tours. Um, so what are our favorite <laughs> quotes and our star ratings? I gave it one and a half stars for some actually competent action. And I think my favorite quote is going to be... It might be the creepy one about the girls. It could be... <laughs> um, you can't just take them all. Well, no, no, because I'm trying to take the ones that I don't think anyone else is going to take. But I think my two would be that creep. I'm just here for the girls or when the guy shoots the arrow and he says, if this happens again, you will be the apple. You will because be out the of apple. context, like, it's just such a weird threat to make to a person. You might be able to stop me, but you cannot stop the magic. And how many stars? Uh, oh, my star rating? Yeah. Uh, I, I like one. I won't take the, I, I can't, I can't do it copy. I can't take the, you might defeat me, but you can't defeat the magic. I'm going to go with... <laughs> There's a line there. The kidnappers are, th are making a video to threaten that they're going to execute the girls. And they say, 76. this is your final warning. If we don't get like, if you don't meet our demands, we're going to execute them in 72 hours. <laughs> no, you have three whole days. No, to work something out. They say 76 hours. What? <laughs> Wait, they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> It was 72. No, it's well, 76. That would make sense, huh? I just 76 read... hours. I just what? noticed this. Oh well, my! I just like noticed the this today. The time zones and stuff. It is 76 hours. Why you is know, it 76 hours? Away, you know, they're being nice. Because <laughs> they panicked <laughs> and forgot how many be 76. hours. 76. You were supposed to say seven hours. <laughs> seven hours so they have enough time to see the message and give not 70 that's so long we got to sit here <laughs> listening to these shrieking women for three more days for a little over three more days <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go with that one star rating oh man i really i need to catch up on letterbox because i need to have i'm a like couple a, movies behind I, I need to have a comparison 
before I just start throwing these out because this one was, like I said earlier, the action was better than I think I originally gave it credit for. I was laughing through a good portion of it, but it wasn't. It was just funny because it was bad. Stars, oh, it might be one, might be half of I one. I was too nice to this movie. One and a half is way too many. I, I was I, I was having a good time. I was laughing, but it was not good. I mean, I liked how much broken glass they saved for the end. I was wondering, where's all the broken glass in this movie? <laughs> I also like at the end, like they just want there to be so much stuff flying through the air. At one point, he goes to like shoot the guys that are like guarding uh, his daughter and like her friend, and the guy like has a hand of like cards, and he just like instead of like dropping the cards as he gets shot, he like throws them up throws in the, the air, air just so there's like more stuff flying <laughs> in the air to make it look more dynamic. Yeah. Mm. I have. I think I have a new theory about Seagal movies. Oh wait. Uh, first, can I give my my quote and star rating? Of course. Yeah. Oh yes, please do. Sorry. Okay, so I could choose the favorite quote, but none of the quotes really hit me as hard. Um, as I liked you better when you were a. B I knew it. <laughs> and yep, that's yep. gonna be my quote for this movie, and I'm gonna give it a whopping point two five stars. I think. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um i will also say actually Fair. there was one i forgot about earlier on in the movie in that like fish market fight scene at one point he says to a guy why don't you go back to your own genetic puddle and go for a swim boy you call me exactly a junior what he means by that insult, uh, well, oh on. yeah I yeah he does do that. that i did i, don't know I did exactly write a note what for that, that insult means but that's my favorite quote from seagal himself other than when, when he's when told he his daughter the, was the can... lady why don't what you go that? back to your own genetic puddle and go for a swim boy Yep. And if you put a pejorative boy at the end of any sentence, it becomes racist. I don't oh, make the rules. That's because uh, just, that's because, I miss that. Oh my uh, god! That's when he meets. Um, that's when he meets uh, Lulu. Lulu. Yeah, mm. that's when he meets Lulu. And so he was the guy that he insults was like hitting on Lulu, and Lulu didn't like it, and so she ran away. So he's telling this guy to like, yeah, if you're no, looking I... for something, go back to your own genetic puddle. I, I got that content. It's still a weird insult. Why don't you go back to your own it's genetic nice puddle and go for a swim, boy? I knew that it was like in response to this guy, like he was like bothering Lulu, but it was still yeah. weird. I didn't fully understand what he was exactly what he was trying to insinuate there. Um, so yeah, really cool. I missed that. But I also like That's when rough. his daughter's kidnapped and his response is, "You're kidding." Again, you're kidding. So I have like five favorite quotes from this movie. Uh, what's your theory, Hans? So I think you know how real movies are shot not in the order that the, yeah. that the events yeah, happen yeah. on screen it's entirely based what? around when sets are available and, and what makes They're sense to shoot first except based for on... mad max fury road but anyway well okay but it, it depends on the movie and how production is set up and all that stuff i i think that all these seagull movies are shot more like the uh you remember when we were know. kids and you had a a, a tape recorder mm -hmm. or a, you know a a video camera or whatever that recorded to a cassette you tape. You shoot the scene yes. and then the scene so, and then the scene. So you had to shoot it in order so that it went so that it was in order on the cassette tape because you couldn't edit it. <laughs> I think that's how these movies are made. <laughs> no, oh, it is, all makes sense now. It either has to be that or it's just the fact that we've talked about before that they shoot these movies with an intended order and then just have to shuffle them around like randomly like during the editing production. <laughs> because everything they just ends because Seagal's order. ego yeah. like so many there was one Isabel there was one not too long ago that was was it was Ticker right I mean they that shot was... the entire movie in 12 days they had Seagal yeah, but for they six either, of them it was... and they had the main villain for one of them <laughs> and they only got through it, it was like a quarter yeah. or a half or something like that of the actual movie that they wanted to film so they had to splice and in boy does like, it they had show to, yeah, they had to hack up the entire movie to stretch it out to a full hour and 30 minutes. And then they had to splice in, like, B-roll footage from other movies so that it, like, actually took up the entire hour and 30 minutes. And it's just the worst. Yikes. So, Isabel, have you enjoyed your time here with us this week watching... So, wait, you watched this movie three times. So three that's, times. like... What is that, like four and a half hours? Four and a half hours. Seagal? You know, like a, a medium length YouTube video essay. You, yeah. So you've watched four <laughs> and a half hours and then we've talked for about like an hour and a half or so here now. Have you enjoyed the, your six hours uh, of Seagal S this week? Six hours of Seagal. Have you enjoyed this time? Was this a meaningful experience? Were you glad to be a guest here? 
Yeah, I've been a long time listener, first time caller, and I definitely enjoyed <laughs> this part of it. Um, watching the movie three times. Wa- watching the movie three times was a mistake, but I don't regret it. Okay, well, <laughs> that's the best we can. So this is why I only watched the movie once, and then we talk about it for actually longer than the runtime of the movie. Yeah, so yeah, we have exceeded it now. The enjoyable part is much. If you only watch it once, the enjoyable part is actually there. You spend more time on that than on the, the work, the movie. I mean, if I didn't watch it three times, I would have known that they said seventy six hours instead of seventy two. Oh, it was all because worth who it. the hell would say seventy six? Oh, we appreciate your contribution. I was so glad you caught that. Yeah, so we now all we now all have to watch these movies three times before recording. No, nope, set the no, 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 absolutely no, 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 no. do not. No, sir. <laughs> I have a very short list. I have exactly three movies so far that I would even entertain the possibility of rewatching once. I only have one. Which one's that? Three. I under know Siege had... 2, obviously. I have both of yeah, the Under Sieges under... and The Foreigner are the only ones that I would even consider watching a second time. I'm not going to watch it a second time, well, but those are the, the only ones that like, you for... would not need to hold me at gunpoint to watch a second time. For, du- what was his name? Dubois? Exactly. Dubois. Dunoir, come on. Dunoir. Dunoir. <laughs> I'm sorry. Our I favorite character, Boudoir. his name. <laughs> yeah. I would watch like, a cut of that movie where he's the main character easily. Yeah. He should have been the main character. He was okay, anyway, this, character this is not the Foreigner now. episode. This is Belly of the Beast. Real quick, uh, if you look at the Belly of the Beast poster, oh my god, it's him yeah. like holding his gun, kind of weird. Of his arm is his is, head is photoshopped, is positioned his body. in the wrong yeah. place for his body for where his and head it says is. A father's but then rage above him, <laughs> yeah. Oh wait. I don't see that anywhere on the poster I'm looking at. Oh, the one I have has this quote, A Father's Rage Knows No Limit right under his gun, right on the CIA logo. It's probably not on all of them. Oh. But, okay. but yeah, then there's a Well, car it doesn't matter. Above, above that, there's a, a flying okay, car. Okay, I wanted to ask, is there a car Where chase the... at any point in this movie? No. no. Okay, good. They, they drive in a, an ancient Mercedes around everywhere, but it's not like a... It never goes over the 30 miles an hour. Yeah, it just it, the the scene starts with them coming to a stop and getting out of the car. Okay, they didn't. The car is not a, like an integral part of any part of this movie, but it's a it takes up half the poster. Because spoiler alert, and it's flying. I did say in my letter, I did my letterbox review already, and I said that this is actually one of the better looking like posters for his movies. Like it has some kind of like graphic design composition to it, but like a third of the poster is this car, and I'm sitting here like. I know I wasn't paying that much attention. I know I didn't watch this three times. I only watched it once, but I don't think there was like a car at any point. Like I don't think there was a car chase. Like there were cars in the movie, yes, but there was no interesting part that involved cars, right? Am I going crazy here? I was I no. had that same thought too. It is the poster just, is just a hot mess. Just the just CIA logo randomly on there. I just can't get over where his hand is in comparison to his face. It just doesn't make sense. Yes. Again, this isn't the worst poster, but it is probably the one most disconnected from the actual source material. Now here, I'm going to try to do like an outro for us. So th- this is like taken, except Seagal gets on the phone and he says, I don't know who you are. I don't know who I am. I don't even really know where this is taking place. Uh, if you're looking for a ransom, I can tell you I probably I do have the money being laundered through this movie we're in. But what I don't have are a very particular set of skills. <laughs> skills that I have not acquired over a potentially long but barely explained career, most likely in the CIA. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you and anybody who's ever had to work on a set with me. If you let my daughter go, that will be the end of it. I will barely respond. I won't have an emotion. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And my partner, my buddy, will kill you. While I, again, don't have any emotions about the actual situation. Good luck. Click. (laughs) That means one of us has to die. All right, all right. Wait, 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 w